It's been over a year and a half since we've seen a prototype of SpaceX's next-gen Starship spacecraft fly, with its first flight with a Super Heavy rocket having been perpetually pushed back during that time. However, this is finally going to change soon as SpaceX's shiny Starship has now inched closer to leaving the atmosphere. Let's find out everything about it in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Elon Musk took to Twitter last Thursday morning to post a photo of Starship sitting atop the Super Heavy rocket, rising above the coastal fog in South Texas. The photo was arresting, and Musk appended a short comment. Starship launch attempt soon. Soon, of course, is a relative word in spaceflight, but SpaceX also tweeted January 12th it was moving ahead with a final series of tests of the Starship vehicle and Super Heavy booster at the Starbase test site in Boca Chica, Texas. The company installed a Starship vehicle called Ship 24 on top of a Super Heavy booster designated Booster 7 on the launch pad January 9th. Now see why March feels and seems possible? Much work remains before Starship launches on Super Heavy, of course. The combined vehicle must undergo a wet dress rehearsal, then the Starship's upper stage would be removed so that the Super Heavy rocket can undergo a full static test fire of the 33 Raptor engines. In fact, the Starship team recently targeted a launch date of January 20th, according to people familiar with the planning, but the date was postponed to conduct testing, which was delayed in part due to road repair near the test site, one person said. The company is now targeting January 20th for what is known as a static fire test to make sure all 33 engines on the rocket function properly, the people have said. However, this test, which is the final test before attempting to launch, could still be rescheduled, people cautioned. Then the vehicles must be restacked and SpaceX must still receive its launch license. The FAA completed an environmental review in June, allowing Starship orbital launches to proceed from Boca Chica, but requiring the company to implement about 75 measures to mitigate environmental effects. Neither SpaceX nor the FAA have provided updates on the progress of implementing those mitigations or the status of a Starship launch license. However, the FAA, in a statement to Space News January 12th, said not all measures need to be completed before issuing the launch license. The time frame for SpaceX to implement the more than 75 required environmental mitigations for the Starship Super Heavy program varies, the agency said. For example, some measures must be completed prior to launch, while others are designed to occur post-launch or perhaps following a mishap. The FAA will ensure SpaceX complies with all required mitigations. However, March seems like a probable time for launch. The month, after all, is named after Mars, the god of war. Not only SpaceX, but NASA is also looking forward to this historic flight. The world's never seen a vehicle like Starship before. If successful, the massive spacecraft would open up new possibilities for the space industry never available before. This is because Starship could realize the long-desired goal of a rapid, low-cost reuse of a launch system. Consider the status quo. The large space launch system rocket under development by NASA would be able to launch 95 metric tons into low Earth orbit. NASA and its contractors, led by Boeing, will be able to build one a year. The expendable vehicle would launch a payload at a cost of about $4 billion per mission and then drop into the ocean. In terms of lift capacity, the vehicles are similar. Starship and Super Heavy should be able to put 100 tons into low Earth orbit. However, SpaceX is already capable of building one Starship a month, and the plan is to reuse each booster and spacecraft dozens of times. Imagine the kind of space program NASA could have with capacity to launch 100 tons into orbit every two weeks instead of a single annual mission at $4 billion a year. Seriously, pause just a moment and really think about it. In their decision to select SpaceX for the human landing system, NASA officials appeared to recognize this potential. We were looking to see what industry partners could bring in terms of innovation and solutions, said Lisa Watson Morgan, the human landing system program manager. The emphasis here is on innovation and new solutions to old problems. In picking the Starship architecture, NASA is helping enable a path toward a super heavy launch vehicle, in-space propellant storage, in-space refueling, and large up and down mass to planetary surface, says Tripathi, who examined these problems from both the NASA and SpaceX perspective. Put another way, if Starship is successful, NASA no longer needs to pick just one or two big things to do in space. 
the agency would be able to do many different things at the same time. More importantly, Starship will transform space science to degrees no one today can understand. Starship, by its design, can be refueled by other Starship vehicles in Earth orbit. That means it could hypothetically carry a huge amount of mass around the solar system. You could get a 100-ton object to the surface of Europa, SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk said in a public meeting of the National Academies in November 2021. That is a five times higher performance than the very best SLS can offer, even in its final configuration with a kick stage. Starship is also forecast to be significantly cheaper, although whether it can hit Musk's optimistic projection of less than $10 million per launch remains to be seen. If they get anywhere near that cost, it's kind of an analog to a 747 and a shipping container all in one, said Robin Haig, former head of launch at the UK launch company Skyora. That's going to be used throughout the solar system. With 1,000 cubic meters of usable volume, Starship's also big enough to fit the entire Eiffel Tower, disassembled of course, though not powerful enough to lift it into orbit. This gargantuan capability led Jennifer Heldman of NASA Ames Research Center and her colleagues to publish a paper on what sort of equipment Starship could carry to the lunar or Martian surface. Refilling Starship in orbit effectively resets the rocket equation, allowing for large payloads to be transported to the Moon and Mars, they wrote, a reference to the fact that the more mass you want to launch traditionally, the more thrust you need on the exponential scale. Starship is not limited to those destinations, though. It is not fine-tuned to either the Moon or Mars, says Margarita Marinova, a former senior Mars development engineer at SpaceX. The goal for Starship is to create this more generic, larger-scale exploration capability. Ideas include launching full-size drills rather than pint-size version. You can put a 100-foot, 30-meter drill on the vehicle and then just deploy it, Heldman says. You don't have to try and fold it up. That's exciting because you can drill down into ice on Mars, which is very important for sustaining human exploration and also the search for life. Starship could conceivably also offer two-way delivery service, returning vast quantities of material to Earth from these and other worlds. We've always been very cautious about the samples we return because we've been limited by the amount of mass, Heldman says. With Starship, you can just load up that vehicle with rocks and ice and whatever else you find. Meanwhile, Starship's unique capabilities could be used to launch a wide variety of next-generation space telescopes to revolutionize astrophysics. For all of this, I really hope the latest Starship timeline will come true. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget to share your ideas in the comment section down below. Your support motivates us to create more quality video. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.